Bottom of the clip, but the gun shine stay high. What them boys still boating in that way? Big plate, get it for the 18 if you straight. Get K and stop hating, it's the model of the state. High. A lot of fakes, but it's still real around here. That foreign talk, that can get you killed down here. Niggas better learn the lingo, cause they'll be looking for you in that water, finding emo. See, Palm Beach County be the craziest. Them Broad County niggas be the craziest. And them Dade County niggas be the wildest. Shout out to Bell Glaze and my niggas at Fort Myers. Salute to all my Florida boys out here on the ground. When niggas out here getting dough with that snow and the sunshine. Ducking nine, waiting at the port to bring in that order. Cause niggas like the pen don't what come cross that water. Welcome to South. I was Florida. born in the South, South. raised in the South. A Dade County nigga that was made in the South. Yo, 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 what's going on, man? I don't care, man. That's still, that's still, that's still the hottest paint intro on goddamn internet. I don't care what nobody <laughs> says. I don't, I don't care how old it is. I don't care how many players in there done graduated and went to the NFL. I don't care how many motherfuckers ain't on the roster. It's still you challenge, cool. You challenge y'all to find a better one. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, it's still, it's still the fly. What's going on, man? Y'all getting here. Make sure you hit like, hit share. Make sure you send it to any Kane fans, any homeboys that's Kane fans that you think ain't paying attention. They somewhere filling out, f- f- filling out their bracket, talking about West Lafayette going to upset Kentucky. Send that dude the link, man. Tell him we live. We in this thing, man. We're going to jump in here, man, and um, get on here with Sly uh, from Premier Athletes, man. Sly um, has trained everybody from damn Sam Bruce to... Josh Ali, Najuku, Jeremiah Smith, Josiah Trader, every any Raven kid that ever walked through Ravens Park, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll let him get in here in a minute, man, and talk about his accolades and how many kids he's trained and his his, his what he has called the craft. Now, listen, he ain't gonna tell you much. He got it called the craft. He teach kids wide receiver voodoo, and he ain't gonna tell you much. He gonna talk in another language. He gonna you know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna let you in on on the secret sauce or whatever he be doing, juju bees and frog legs he put in the mix and make the kids drink. Whatever he do, you know what I'm saying? To, to get thousand yards receivers like Restrepo, um, he ain't gonna let you in on too much. You know what I'm saying? So, but we are gonna get him in here and let him talk about the craft. So y'all hit the like button, man. Hit share. What's going on with y'all boys? Y'all boy chilling? Yeah, man. We yes, sir. I'm good. <clears throat> yeah, looking forward to hearing uh slide man drop that drop some uh, gems. You know we got them. Mm-hmm. Any before we get slide here, man. Any any big cane? Anything been going on with the canes, man? Like lately? Mm, kind of no, quiet. Man. Boy, your boy put work in. We see that obviously. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if we've been on here since the whole. We've been on here since Cam did the whole Shador thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. We have. Okay. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow is pro day. Them boys get to run again. Is is Cam right. Kitchens and James running again? They should. <laughs> yeah, they better be. Mm. So, Matty, Matty, <laughs> you predicted this shit the first time because I was all off. You know what I'm saying? You predicted. <laughs> what the, what, so, what? Hand tomorrow? Is it hand time on pro day now? Or is it still laser? I think it's hand. I don't think they got the laser set up up there. So. Definitely lion season. Definitely lion season. <laughs> lion I heard, season. I heard, yeah, I heard Georgia receiver. He they said he went up to uh, Lab McConkey. He ran a four three nine at the combine, something like that. They talking about he. Ain't he a, a tight end? <laughs> nah, he a wide no, receiver. No, that's Brock Bowers. He, 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 he a wide receiver. He, yeah, he, he ran. He, he ran a four three at the combine though, didn't he? Yeah, but they saying he might have ran something crazy at the pro day. So yeah, it's definitely lion season. <laughs> that boy might run a four flat. <laughs> Let them tell it. Um, Man, well, so, so we, Maddie, we did. What? No, Matty got to let me know. What you think the boys in? They did four sixes right at the combine, right? I think they'll do mm-hmm. it down to, uh, to maybe a high four five. High four five? Yeah. Come on, we got to get four four. You, 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 no, no, Rich. Yeah, Rich, you know they're going to go in there and take <laughs> they in the indoor. They in the indoor. You know they're going to take their shirt off. So that's plus, that's plus point two. You know what I'm saying? They're going to take their shirt so, off. <laughs> I'm gonna come back to Jeremy. I'm gonna come back high. to uh, y'all man's question. So high four fives. Yeah, I think they shave a little time off and they back home. So 
teammates gonna be cheering them on, you know. Man, I thought we'd at least get down to old four four, huh? That's asking Damn. a lot. That's asking a lot. <laughs> That's asking a lot. What you think, Kyle? Kyle, you don't think they get the four fours? Mm-mm. You a four four or you not? Mm-mm. You a four four no. or you not? Nah. That's a different kind of time. You a four four or you not? Not even at home with the crib, home cooking? Mm-mm. I don't think it's going to be that much home cooking. <laughs> James don't need James don't need the four four. No. <clears throat> James, James don't need it. James get down to a four five, four five eight. As long as it say four five, he'll be fine. Cam mm-hmm. on the other, mm-hmm. other hand, it might be a different story. But mm. Cam, you see y'all questions. Cam, you want to spend a block on it? Cam need Cam need what about what four four? No, I sure. mean it'd be nice, but it is what it is. I don't think he can get it. Um, mm. but yeah, he, he, I mean they got to look past down, that. Yeah, he knocked it down to four five seven and kill the drills. He'll climb. He'll climb up. We'll stop him move a little bit. Mm-hmm. Shout out to y'all, man. Mike. Fine, I, see, man. I, see, I see y'all, man. Mike question, Mitty. <laughs> Listen, man, I just went to Duffy's with Jeremiah Smith and his family, and, and we all went out to eat after they worked out. No, nah, man, the man did not mention the, the man is not miserable at Ohio State, okay? <laughs> all right? He's not miserable up there. He's not. You know what I'm saying? I kind of joked with him about how big he looked on that picture. I was like, bro, listen, I know you had just came out the weight room, right? We know he's talking, about, yeah. I just get, yeah, I know you just came out of the weight room, but you're looking all swole. So, we're gonna put you next to DK Metcalf where you're looking all swole up, but that picture's gonna go viral forever, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, <laughs> nah, y'all he, never, he those, didn't say hold, miserable. y'all hold those Jeremiah questions till they lose to Michigan and Ryan Day gets fired, <laughs> then we can start talking, <laughs> and then we can say whatever. We can, yeah, we can say yes. whatever. Um, but no, nah, no, nah, he's he not miserable, man. Miserable, man. Number one player in the nation. You know what I'm saying? NIL going on can't be miserable. Miserable is far fetched. I don't give a fuck if he's in South Dakota. You know, one player in the nation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, NIL going on. He ain't miserable now. But man just took a shot at Mitty. Huh? <laughs> man just took a shot at Mitty talking about Dakota like that. Uh, I ain't going to be here long. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't even worry about it. Um, why everybody keep talking about Mark Fletcher? I don't know. Like I said, we're gonna spend a block on that real quick, okay. though. We were yeah, we'll, 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 we'll hit, we'll hit the questions. Uh, Rich, what, what, what's, what's your take on uh, on Cam and uh, James? And think they're running? I mean, just like KB said, it don't matter what four or five uh. James runs as long as he runs a four or five something. It could be a four or five nine 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 nine. As long as he's in that arena, I think his stock goes way up based on the positions that they're gonna try him at in the NFL. Uh Cam, I think it is what it is. It's kind of you is or you not. If he could get down to like a four four nine nine nine, you know, more power to him. But um that's one of those things where if you're a four, four guy at anywhere, you're a four, four guy everywhere. So, I mean, he would, he would have ran close to that in the combine. So even if your hand time, it's going to be, it's going to kind of be the same thing. If he could be a four, five, seven, four, five, eight guy or less, that'll help a little bit, but, you're going to have to look at him as a different type of safety, as one of those guys who's going to be a lot more cerebral than um, than some of the other picks out there who might run faster times. Okay. Yeah. I think that might be – some of that might be a good question for Sly as a guy who's been there and done that. Um, Sly may be able to explain, you know, can you get your time faster or why can't you get your time faster? So that may be something that we can leave up to him as well. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and keep that up. Had, had that one in the hosting, uh, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, no pretty, problem. No problem. Something happened, so. um, okay. We won't waste any time, man. We'll let y'all. We, we'll, we'll get right into it, man. Um, for those who don't know, uh, we'll let him kind of give his his, his spiel um, of, of who he is and how he operates. Um, and so, you know, straight good? Yeah, 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 I'm straight. 
Um, and so, yeah, we, we won't, we won't, uh, <laughs> we won't do this any further, man. The one and only Mr. a slide Johnson. Sly, what's going on, bro? Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having me, everybody. What's, up, what's, what's going up? on? What's going on? Not man? much. Appreciate, appreciate y'all. Thanks for having me on. What's going on? How we doing? Chilling. That's fine. Man. You good? You good, brother? So Sly, so Sly, I, like, um, yes, sir. we go, we go way, we we go way back, way back to Sam Bruce. Um, was when I first discovered y'all. Um. What would you call yourself, though? Would you call yourself a, a wide receiver trainer? Like, what would you call? What, what would you call yourself? Uh, more a teacher, okay. because if you train someone, you kind of have to retrain them every now and then. When you teach them, they kind of own the concepts and they can retrain themselves. Uh huh. So it's more of a teacher. So 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 more more of a teacher, and and real right. quick. Yeah, real real quick, your your accolade because some people are like man, listen, wide receiver, his wide receiver trainers everywhere, man. What make them qualified? What make them qualified uh, to train people's kids? Talk talk to them. Tell me a little bit about yourself, dog. Well, um, I I'm from here. I actually played the resist the position. I played receiver at uh at Miramar High School. I was at Pace with Rod Mack for years. That's why me oh, and Rod you? are so great. <laughs> I went to Pace first mm-hmm. with Rod Mack. Yeah. Then, then I went to Miramar High School. Um, that's where I was teammates with Chris McGonigal. And um, then uh, I went to uh, Miami, Ohio, and I actually okay. played receiver there. Most most guys um, they they train receivers, but they didn't really play the position, which is fine because I I train quarterbacks in other positions. But mm-hmm. it gives me a, a real advantage because I can go off. Um, I can mentally put myself in the situation, recreate it, and then win, and then tell the other person how to win. And most people can't tell other people the concepts because they don't know how that person receives information. So how many of us are there? Let's say there's four of us here right now, five of us. All of us might receive the information differently. So unless I'm able to convey the message to every single person individually, only two or three people will be able to get the message. So some people are visual learners. So let's say JoJo, I can just do something and he can physically copy it, you know? And then uh-huh. you have JJ who I can talk to and he can physically own it and then do it himself. So I'll teach JoJo first, I'll do it and then tell him what I did, but I'll tell JJ first and then I'll do it so that they can understand the concepts. And every kid is different. And at every age level, it's usually different on how they receive information. So having the information, owning the information, and getting someone else to own it is usually the the adversities when dealing with teaching, not training. Gotcha. Ooh, that makes sense. So, 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 go back a little further. So, you played in high school. Were you good in high school? I was a, I was all county. I was the I led the county in receiving at Miramar High School. I averaged like thirty yards a catch, I believe. Thirty yards. Um, what year? We, we, what year are we talking? What year are we talking? Nineteen ninety seven. I played for Al Lang. Okay. We, we ran the wing T, so every play was a D ball, pretty much. It was all play action, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I think I only had like. 27 catches, 28 catches, something like that, but close to like 600 and something yards or 700 yards. I forget my exact stats, but it was something crazy. Damn, 97. Y'all, y'all had to be one of the only teams running the wing T in 97. Y'all in what? Man, you, te- you telling me? You telling me? Shout out to Nahim. Shout out to Nahim. I passed with 218 uh, bootleg, 28 waggle. 234 pop pass, and then we had a Liz set, which was like our hurry up offense. So I couldn't wait to be down so we can get the hurry up offense going. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Naheem. He got the uh he got the Randy Watson cosign. That you said good. Sign, he was good. So so mm-hmm. good. you said you led the county? Yeah, and yards per catch. Yep. And your big play. Give me give me give me some no wide receivers that was in the county at the time. Who who else? Who was who else was out there? Uh, who else was in I think Kevin, Kevin, I think Kevin might have led that year. Yeah. They threw the ball a lot at Plantation. Ryan Snyder threw the ball around. We were at yes, they we did. were in the wing too. 
Um, and there was another Who kid. Uh, I think his name was Sam McWhorter. He was at Piper. Um, and then there was a kid named, last name like Sheffield or something. He was at Nova High School. He had the most catches. I read that thing every Saturday morning trying to see people's stats. <laughs> what what you were reading? Uh, the Miami Herald. Uh, the Sun Sentinel. Remember, we used to get our stats yeah. out of the movie. Yep. Yep. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would run and go get the newspaper and try to see who these stats was. And I remember them. I got them names memorized. It was Sheffield, Beard, McWhorter, and um, there was someone else. Uh, oh, mm. well, you know, Dan Morgan was the, the leading rusher. He, Brian Hayes. Of course, Brian. Mm -hmm. um, Dan Morgan was the what? The leading, leading Russia. He was the leading rusher. He was at the, at the what? Was it Creek yeah. Oak Springs? No, nah, he was at Terrabella. He was a Terrabella running yeah. back. Nobody went to town. Mm hmm. And um, oh, what's uh, What's his name? Um, Nick from uh from Ely. God dang, I can't think of the running Nick back Davis. name. Nick Davis. Nick Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Nick was a bad boy. Nick Davis. Ely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nick Davis. So it was Nick Davis, Brian Hay, and Dan Morgan. Those are the running yep. backs I remember in my era, like in my uh, senior year at least. So you went out. So okay. So then you went on. You actually went. So you went to college. What college you went to? Miami, Ohio. Miami University. Miami, Miami, of Ohio. Did you go on scholarship or how did you get there? Uh, I had a, a, a track scholarship to Miami of uh, Florida. My cousin's mm -hmm. Melvin Bratton, and um, oh, okay. he had he had something set up at, at Miami where they I, I had a track scholarship and I would have to walk on the football team. And I was a uh, I, I wasn't really sure about that situation, you know. So yeah. then I got a some um like I, I got Miami Ohio Virginia Tech Purdue and um they were mostly at cornerback so I went I found the only receiver offer I had which was Miami Ohio and took it and some guy named <laughs> Santana Moss took the track scholarship go figure <laughs> <laughs> that's the homie too what's up Tanner man you're a Sant you're you Tanner, were Santana Moss kind of same situation yeah, huh Santana Moss was in the offense that ran the ball too Yep. And he was, yeah, he was a baller too. He was at Scott Lake with me. I remember I went yeah. to their they, uh, uh, playoff game. I forget who they played, but he caught a little uh, a little comeback on the sideline, took it up the sideline and scored. And I was like, okay, Tanner on. He's on. And uh, it okay, was also Kyle. another kid named Pat Jenkins at Carroll City. I think he went to Tennessee State. He was real fast. He was in the state champ. I ran track too. And in the state finals, he was next to me. So I remember him. He was home team. There was a Demetrius Ivy. So Demetrius Ivy, Vinny Sutherland, Pat Jenkins, and myself are the ones I remember. Adrian Zulo and the Adrian Zulo. But believe it or not, Dan Morgan would make it to the finals in the 100 meters. <laughs> hmm. How far? What would he end up in the final heat? What would he, what would he end like third, fifth? Ten, nine, he was like a 10, 9, 11 flat guy, but he was huge. Dan, big. How big was Dan Morgan? In high Dan school, he was big, big does, coach. He was probably two hundred something pounds, coach. He was running people over. He was fast. He was he was the man in our county during that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 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 at Miami of Ohio, somebody said you did you play with Big Ben? Uh, that was my recruit. So I was a senior, and mm -hmm. uh, he was a freshman. And after he threw the ball to us a couple, so I hosted him too. So he was my uh, when Big Ben came. Through. Yeah. Being Roethlisberger yeah, yeah. for the people who don't who don't know what I'm talking about. So so you hosted him when he visited Miami, Ohio. Right. So I'm the first person he met because at the time I was the guy that I had the billboard on campus. So they kind of brought everyone to me. And um, he kind of dealt with the, the brothers. He wanted to go to the AKA parties. He wanted to go to the Delta party. So instead of the <laughs> other quarterback hosting him, I got the host. Yeah. You, had, you kept an eye on that boy. That boy kind of wild, man. You, you kept an eye on that boy. That boy kind of loose. <laughs> You remember, you remember you had the beard, right? Yeah. <laughs> he used to line people up. He can shape you up right now. I'm sure he can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was wild. He was a fun oh. guy, though. You know, he, anytime he had an issue, it was in Atlanta. Stop <laughs> <laughs> right, real quick, man. Eddie, man, if y'all in here, man, y'all here getting gems right now, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button, please. Hit the subscribe, man. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
for the for the villains, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna pivot to Kyle in a second, but for the villains, we already had the opportunity to kind of hear, you know what I'm saying, some of the stuff that, that we got from Sly. So go ahead, go ahead and drop that promo, uh, Kyle. Let me know, man. <laughs> So, um, oh, oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Back you, man. what's up? On the backboard, dog. What's up? <laughs> no, 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 let him run. Let Sly run. Go ahead, Sly. Okay, all right. Okay, I, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know the, I didn't know the format. So, just now, um, I was saying that Ben would only have issues like in cities like Atlanta, and I told you about the, the kind of parties we went to. So, that all made sense to me. Y'all can do the rest. So, basically, <laughs> being like being like the sisters, yeah, you said it. <laughs> So as 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 a as a recruit, did you think he would turn out to be like what he turned out? Like, do you think he did? Did you think he was going that far? Yeah, yeah. He um he had offers yeah. to uh, he had offers to, he has offers with Duke that I remember, and he had an offer to Ohio State as a as a tight end. So then senior year was his first year playing quarterback at Finley High School. The year before, the coach's son was the quarterback. Get it? So Got it. he didn't have he didn't have the resume until his senior year, and then his, he started to blow up later on. In the old days recruiting was like you know it happened later. So um, after he took the Duke visit, he came to Miami, Ohio, and his next visit was Ohio State. And I told him, I said, "Hey, you see that cat Chad Pennington at Marshall? Because Marshall was in our conference." I said, "He going to the NFL? Well, you you know that or not? So this is the conference that throws the ball around." I told him about uh, and also we had Charlie Batch at the time. He was in Eastern Michigan. So uh -huh. the Mac threw the ball the most. Remember, we would we would score a lot of points. So we had the quarterbacks yeah. with the with the the resumes. Cause you know college football is about creating a resume for the next level. Gotcha. So yeah, so Miami, so boy. Miami of Ohio. I'm guessing because right now today you about 170 pounds, dog. So how much yeah. are you weighing at Miami, Ohio playing wide receiver? When I got there, I was 160 and when I 158 in the first game, I was like 174. So they uh -huh. put on like I put on like 16 pounds real quick. But I was I was a 10 400 guy in high school, so they didn't really care what I weighed. No, nah. they just you, yeah, they you just, got I that blazing, got that blazing. Right, that's all they cared about. So in on in Ohio that year, the state champion was like a 10 8. And I ran 10 4 and didn't win. Hmm. So, so they, man, they never seen didn't win in the state of Florida with a 10 4. Mm -mm. But so, in Ohio. At the, state champion, uh -huh. <laughs> at the champion meet, I ran 10 7 1 because when they made, I, I took the visit to Miami, Ohio with a guy named Seneca McMillan. He played for the Packers. Um, he was my roommate. And my visit, and he took the visit with me, official. So he's the only one I knew, and he was at the state track meet. And I went with my four by one team, but they had got we lost the day before with that. So I was the only one still there active. And I saw my friend, my new college roommate, and Orlando Dr. Phillips was upstairs, up in the stands, way up to the top. So I was up there chilling with them. And they said, final call for the hundred meters. And the girls next to me that I just met like 10 minutes ago, she tapped me and said, isn't that you? So I had to get up, run down the stairs, down the stands, ran and got in my blocks and got third. I got third, I got fourth with like a 10 seven four. So yeah, I couldn't win the state with a 10 seven. <laughs> no, the Ohio not State here. champion that year was 10 eight. Heck no. Nah. Wow. So, but, uh, so I've always wondered like, I, I I follow I follow Plies. Plies is a, a a real entertaining guy, but you can tell he know a lot about football. A couple of years ago, you answered that question for me: why he knows a lot about football. <laughs> you and you played with Plies at Miami of Ohio, huh? Yes, I did. Algernon, he's a good. He's a he was pretty good too. Algernon, um, where that boy from Taliban? Algernon, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't do him like that. He's from Fort Myers. First Algernon I ever seen in my life. Algernon. Algernon. That name must run his family. Yeah. Y'all said, said his name three times and my couch started floating. 
and Plaz was a what wide receiver? Yeah, he was a receiver. We played the same position. He was the Z when I got there. He uh, uh-huh. he was pretty good. He wore number five too. He was a starting punt returner as well. Oh, was he? Mm-hmm. When I yep, when I got there, yep. He was small. He was smaller than you, though, huh? Yeah, he was. That's what made me bleed when I went on my spring visit. <laughs> when I went around, I'm like, okay, he playing. I'm good. And he was from the crib. He mm-hmm. had a mouth full of goals. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt at home, and he took me underneath his wing. You know, he got in, he had some issues with the coaching staff, so I ended yeah. up I ended up starting originally. I ended up starting that year, so um, there was never any hard feelings or nothing. He he told me, you know, go ahead and do your thing. He never had any issues with me being a starter. Was, was he rapping then? Nah, not yet, huh? Nah, nah. He was running not good yet. routes though. He was, he was running good routes, catching with his hands. Yeah. So you and Plaz kind of like homeboys, like like y'all know each other, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You see him, he adapt you up, y'all. Y'all homeboys. Yeah, we college teammates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and we from Florida, so you automatically kind of we got a vibe that nobody else got. You know, there was like four or five kids from Florida on the team, so you automatically gonna connect. But I didn't know because I'm from the crib that like people be you know trying to act like Florida all the same because. When I first got there, I'm like, you ain't from, I'm from Miami, man. You ain't from the crib, you know? And they're yeah. like, nah, we from Florida, everybody together. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm from Dade. Uh-huh. I'm from Dade. So when I went to Miramar, I was like, oh, I'm out of town, you know? Right. Right. So imagine mm-hmm. me in Ohio. I, I was like, oh, you from Fort Myers and my other one's from Orlando. But when, when we got up there, it's like, Shh, everybody from Florida. Okay, everybody from Florida. So that was the vibe. <laughs> That's how jail works. Shit. <laughs> All that city shit yeah. go, go to the side. Y'all from Florida. <laughs> Ain't no Miami, <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. That's how it is. That's how it is. the same car. No. Got the same car. You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I, got, yeah. I got a question. So, so Sly, you, you graduated in 97? Yes, yep, from Miramar. So were you um were you there? I can't remember what year he got he came out. So were you there before or after Wally Serviak with all the I know he had Bill Boys. Oh, my, oh Miami, Ohio. I graduated. Oh no, I got there in 97. I'm thinking my memory. I'm sorry. I got to Miami, Ohio in 97. And he's my sweet mate. So in college, uh-huh. you have a you have a in the dorm room, you have a, a bathroom, but there's a door to the bathroom and then the, on the other side of the bathroom is another door. Wally Zerbiak lived in the other door. So we shared the same bathroom. Oh, Wally Zerbiak was the man. Of the, I know there's people up there probably don't remember Wally Zerbiak, but Wally was the man in my, yeah, uh, when know. he was in college, man. Yeah, I yeah. used to come out of the dorm room. Uh, I used to try and come yeah. out the dorm room. Sometimes you got reporters waiting for him because you can't tell which room, which room was room, which room was which. So, uh, he would come. He would try to come out of our room sometimes because people would be waiting in the dorm room for him. So he would leave his room, come through our bathroom, and try and sneak out. <laughs> did, you, did, did you did you establish a relationship with him with, in, in any kind of way, or was it just in passing? Um, he still, he taught me how to shoot a basketball, so I can't dribble, but I can shoot. <laughs> that one thing he could do. I'm a, yeah, can shoot. Wally was a bad boy, man. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, boy, that, Wally, that, yeah, yeah. He was, he was a shooter. Wally, Wally wasn't very outgoing though. He was more of a mm-hmm. reserved person. Didn't talk much, you know. And the basketball mm-hmm. guys, they had their own little basketball clique, and they kind of stayed together. And the football did the same. But yeah. since we were sweet mates, we had no no choice but to interact. Your shampoo all over the floor, you know. <laughs> I remember you. Yeah, I got a pretty. I remember the only- the thing that that the, the only issue we ever had with Wally was, you know, there's a rack underneath the the, the shower, right? And mm-hmm. so you got you know you got your rack, and everyone usually would take like a portion, you know, you put your little body wash or your little shampoo. Man, Wally took all that shit, man. He took all that. He had all type of shampoos <laughs> and gels and all type of <laughs> stuff and face coverings and all type of stuff, man. I ain't never knew nothing about that kind of stuff. So oh, I need to get on that. I said, this is how they do it in Ohio? Well, I had to so, keep his face pretty, man. Shit. And his hair. 
<laughs> so back back on plies though. <laughs> Plies. Because you and Plies home, you and Plies homeboy, right? Let's get into it, man. You and Plies homeboy, but Plies tweeted mm-hmm. this. I don't even, I don't know if y'all can see that. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of, that kind of small. But Plies tweeted this. Bobby I'm not Strepo. taking anything from the kid Restrepo, a, a good slot wide receiver, but he's not the wide receivers of old at the U. Got to have a, 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 a true number one and number two wide receiver out there. Who can score from anywhere on the field, take the top off the defense, and let Restrepo work the slot in the middle of the field. Now you you trained Restrepo since he was six, seven, eight, nine years old. You trained him for a long time, right? Long time. More than half a long life. time. Well, so when Plaz took a shot at your boy, like you text Plaz was like, hey man, hold up, man. We're trying to get to the league. What's up with Plaz taking the shot at your boy? You, you know what? Uh, the last time I actually spoke to him was uh, we remember those next tail thing, push the talks, Dang. two way, church, two way, church, the church, church, oh. and church. It, yeah, it was it was during the hurricane, and that was the only thing working at the time was the church. And so I was going through chirping, trying to see who who I could talk to, who what what, what who was online, and that was a, I found him, Plies. He was the only one online. What's up, <laughs> What's up? And so it, at that time. He was uh he would send me music, you know, and I remember one song he was saying, uh, I forget exactly what, but he kept saying like f nigga this and pussy. And I was like, bro, I don't think you could talk like that, cause where I'm from, you can't say them words, you know. <laughs> right. Them fighting words. Right. You know, anytime I hear them kind of languages, I'm getting up out of there, cause I know what's going down after that. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if that's the vibe right now to be saying that, but I don't know that. He out here in different parts of the world where you can do that, you know? Right. So, I mean, obviously I wasn't the best teacher when it came to music because he damn sure did <laughs> he damn sure no, did he well did, with that. Did, no, I he did wrong. his damn thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. My bad. Yeah. Is, is, is he as entertaining? Because he's very entertaining on social media, bro. Like, in person, is he normally just like that? Uh, I remember... He got into it with uh that Seneca guy, the same Seneca McMillan that was from Orlando, mm-hmm. Dr. Phillips. Right. He um they started ranking, you know, and all I remember was uh Seneca telling Plies, man, just shut up, man. You get your clothes from Baby Gap. <laughs> and that was the last thing that I remember, <laughs> like when it came to going back and forth. I know that he I know that he used to get them because. You know, my other homeboy was Japanese, called him Japanese something, but that's all I can remember was that. So when it comes to, to that whole world, that's what I remember. He, he was, he was more of a, huh? Oh, it was, oh, it was about to go down, boy. He wasn't playing that. Oh, it was, <laughs> that was the first time I seen him, like, he was going to go at it in college. I ain't I'm like, oh, college go down like this? Yeah. No. yeah. All right, so. All right, so so let's get into it, man. A lot, a lot that you that you're training these kids. A lot of that rooted back into you being a wide receiver, right? In college, mm-hmm. and and a lot of things you learned. Talk talk to us about what you learned in college, and 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 how you have applied it to to this the, the craft that that you created. All right, so um, in high school, I was recruited um, by Aaron Cromer. He ended up being that. Remember the guy that was got caught, the OC that got caught talking about Jay Cutler on the mic. Yeah. That was my OC. I, I mean, I was the guy that recruited me. Okay. So originally when I got there in the spring, the offensive coordinator was Sean Payton. Hmm? So, oh, it's not. so the Sean Payton philosophies was what we were taught. And um Aaron Cromer and Ken Zampezi, who was the son of Ernie Zampezi, um, was my receiver Damn. coach. And he also, and he also was the co OC. Gotcha. So it okay. went from it, it went from Sean Payton to Ken, Z- Ken Zampezi, um, Aaron Cromer, who was uh, the O-line type coach. Oh, no, uh, o- Aaron Cromer, who was our tight end coach. He later became the OC for uh, the Bears. And Kevin Wilson, he was the head coach of Oklahoma. Uh-huh. With Quentin Griffin. You remember the yeah. Kevin Wilson run at Oklahoma? Yeah. He was the O-line coach. So he also became our offensive coordinator later on. Then I, then I played for Greg Seaman, who is – he was just in um, Cleveland Browns. 
uh, up until last year. He just got a head coaching job across seas. Congratulations to him as well. But I played for a lot of offensive minds who had uh -huh. um, sound concepts and fundamentals that worked against anyone. So I became a believer when we we played against bigger teams like Virginia Tech, North Carolina, West Virginia, and we were going and beat these teams at their place with the players that we recruited. So that made me a believer. I kept saying, boy, if, if home team ever knew this when I got back to the crib, I'm going to teach everybody. <laughs> and that was my goal because uh -huh. I never knew anything about running the route. I just knew you ran yards and turned around and stopped. That's it. And where I'm from, mm. I played for Scott Lake. They say, catch the damn ball. I don't care if you catch it with your feet. Just catch the ball. Man, you do that in Miami, Ohio, you ain't playing. You got to catch it a certain way. You got to run everything a certain way. There was so much attention to detail and technique that you really held accountable for the way you stand, how you run, mm -hmm. um, when you when you ran, how you got there, when you got there, how you reacted. And when I was here, they say it's a 10-yard curl, 10-yard uh, post. That was it. You do your thing. You figure it out. But out there, it was down to the detail. It, it was it was it was so specific that they can tell if you ain't do it right. Everyone can tell if you ain't do it right because it was so choreographed. Football is a very choreographed thing, and I learned that at that level. And uh -huh. when I came back home, I tried to give the concepts of chore like uh, uh, choreographing offense. That's what, exactly what it is. So there's there's schemes and fundamentals that everyone's held to. And if everyone is accountable to it, it'll seem choreographed, like it always works. Um, that's the Sean Payton, New Orleans Saints offense. So when y'all watch the Saints, when they had their big Drew Brees run, I can tell you exactly what they're doing. You know, I can tell you if they're executed right, because that's our offense. Those are our concepts. I right. live those concepts. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I can take those concepts and get other people to own them once I realize how they learn. Do they learn physically? Do they learn mentally? Do they learn through film? And we could take that and get everyone on the same page. And you can get the continuity of an Aaron Cromer offense, the Ken Zampezi offense, which is Ernie Zampezi in Dallas, Cowboys. Or you can get the um, Aaron Cromer offense. That was Jay Cutler's offense. Or you can get the Kevin Wilson offense. That was the Oklahoma run. So I have all those concepts embedded in me, and I can use them to um, help everyone be most efficient in their offense because the concepts will overlap eventually. Got you. So, mm -hmm. so, so some of the stuff that Sean Payton do, you totally understand because you were mm -hmm. there when it really. Yes, yes. I can sit there and tell you exactly what they're doing. Break it down to the T. I can tell you who's doing it wrong. Who's doing it right? So, so, and so a Cooper Cup isn't it. right. So a Cooper Cup isn't a mistake. You, you would say, how did that happen? Um, Sean McVay is from Miami, Ohio, as well. Right. And so is um, John Harbaugh. You know. Oh, oh boy, he's so a big name. Yeah. <laughs> all, <names. of> Miami, <laughs> all these are Miami, right. Ohio guys. All these are one connection. They're all intertwined. It's a it's a it's a tree. It's a Miami, Ohio coaching tree. It went back from John Pont, Air Parsesian, Woody Hayes, um, uh, Urban. No, Urban was at a uh, Bowling Green. Uh, we had someone uh -huh. else on that level. I forget. But the more the story is, we're the cradle of coaches, and in the in the college football coaching world, that's that's it's got a lot of credibility coming from come from that tree. It's like the Parcells tree. It's like uh, the Andy mm -hmm. Reid tree. Right. So that's right. the college version of that tree. And I happen to be there at the right time to get overlapped by so many different um, geniuses, to be honest. So yeah. I uh, I was able to soak up and take and give to the people that I know now. And right. Because you that's know for a fact. You know for a fact it worked because it worked against better talent or, or bigger talent. And so you you believe you're a believer, it's like the Bible for you. <laughs> you believe it, you Correct. believe it. Right. It was the Bible for me then because it worked against the people I I went against. It's the yeah. Bible for us now because I get to watch TV and watch it still work. You say watch so, TV. Yeah. <laughs> Did it take you to the next level? Did you make it to the NFL? 
Uh, I tore my ACL and I ran bad combine time. So I tell y'all was talking about the combine, man. That that wasn't the greatest deal for me because I was an ACL guy, and this is the '90s where ACL was a lot bigger deal than it is now. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And I was about, used to be the I was, end. Eight, I was about eight months out of surgery when the combine happened, and nobody told me, "Hey, don't run on four days combine. Wait for pro day." Or, or come back your senior year, red shirt and come back. No one told me that. So <laughs> I uh, I went from a 10-4 in high school. So, you know, I was running crazy times. On my pro day, I ran 4-1-9 and no one wanted to say it. They changed my, everyone Ooh. looked and talked to each other and they went and changed the time because they were scared to put it. So they put 4-2-3 was my l legitimate time. Then later yeah. on that year, I saw, yeah. yeah. So later on that year, I saw Lavernius Coles ran a 4-1 and I was like, <laughs> Why y'all ain't putting y'all in So I, I said, if I went to Florida State, y'all would have wrote it down. Y'all wouldn't write it down because yeah. I went to Miami, Ohio. Yeah. But I beat everybody in track. Right. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Yeah, sir. That's, that's, the, that's, that's part of the Power Five. You know, I didn't have that. I had the group of five. So right. we couldn't mm -hmm. be running the four. One, if nobody else in the Power Five did it, it was it, they were scared. It's scary, it basically. Scary yeah. If everybody's gonna call them, yeah, they're gonna think they were fibbing. That's no. a lie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so so football is over, which is so football is over at that level, right? Or, uh -huh. or did you uh -huh. did you do something else after? Oh that? no, I, I was I played for the Lions for a little while, in and out of training okay. camps, had a couple of trials here mm -hmm. and there, and then I was there for like a year and a half, in and out. I lived with Cedric Irvin for a while because. Um, was it, you know how that is. You hear week one through six, they cut you, they call you uh -huh. back. You know how that goes, right? Right. Mm -hmm. so, so um my agent was Steve Zucker, which was Rockefeller Sports, Jay-Z. And um they they didn't give me the best guidance, you know. Yeah. So uh I ended up um kind of taking advice from friends instead, you know. So I was in and out. Um I, then I got a job with the city of Miramar and I was still getting calls. So I would uh, take a, like a little two week leave of absence or a month leave of, leave of absence and go try out somewhere and then come back. And that, that got over for a while. So I just kept the city of Miramar job and I, I retired not too long ago. Yeah, you was out there for, yeah. you, for, well, you had a job that long? Yeah, I got out. Yeah. They, had a COVID, <laughs> they had a COVID buyout. I took that yeah. thing. A COVID buy. <laughs> if you've been here this long, you can leave. <laughs> All right, so so let's speed it up a little bit. So those concepts that you learned, you said, man, I'm going to the crib and I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna teach these teach. kids these concepts. Give me some names. Get off the back. Give me some names. Give me some guys that that you can say, hey, this guy came through the craft and went to the league. Go. First kid I ever had was I uh, first I trained uh, adults. And then I started training a kid because at the city, one of the parents kept bothering me. Hey, could you train my kid? Could you train my right. kid? So I brought him. I said, bring him here. His name was Daniel Braverman. Daniel when he came Braverman. Here, <laughs> yeah, Braverman. You know, uh -huh. like, Go ahead. he was Braverman. So um, I was like, okay. <laughs> and um, he, he learned quick. He understood these concepts that I was talking about. So he was... I thought these concepts were so mind blowing. And then I was trying to teach them to a 13 year old and he got them, which was motivating for me. So I bought into him and he bought into me. And I started bringing him with my adults. So uh, my first adult ever was David Cooney. And so I had Cooney and Braverman together in one group. And those are my, David, that's when I first started training the craft. David Cooney? That name sounds mm -hmm. familiar. Kane's fans on it. Pop. <laughs> yeah, Coach Cooney yeah. was the first person. Coach Cooney was the first. Mm -hmm. He was a wide receiver. Pop. Yeah, he was a tight end wide receiver. He was a good athlete. He was the first one I ever taught the craft. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh and then the Braverman can't kid came. He ended and, up going to the go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead because you finna say exactly what I was gonna say. Braverman did what? He went to the university school and um, his uh, receiver coach was Kevin Beard. So I went from training Cooney to working with Kevin 
all in about the same amount of time. All of, this is all about mm, 15 years ago. Uh huh. And um, so when he went to the university school, I got I was there with Roger Herrick, Kevin Beard, Ryan Schneider, uh, Dave Simmons, um, Wayne Blair, uh, uh, Daniel Luke. It was a good stat. Chad, Chad Wilson. And you school, um, right, right, right. Yeah, I was at there the that night. School. Yeah, yeah, I was there Correct. that night. And that's man, why you man. came and saw yeah. him with Sam Bruce. Right, 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 so right, right. When Braveman went to the NFL, uh, I mean, as Braveman went on, the camp group, because they I took him to the that South Florida Express tryout one time, and it was AJ Leggett, Tracy Howard, um, and Dion Bush. And I said, Hey, the craft only works against really good people. It works best <laughs> against them. So we're only going against them. So I would hold him out and I would wait for Dion Bush or AJ Leggett or Tracy Howard, someone that it was big time to go, and I'd be like, Hey, you can't cover him. That's how I got going. So I was seven out there. And Bra what was and Braveman? Was, Braveman was what? He was black, he was Indian. What was he? He's a white boy, you know, Jewish, he's like a, a white boy. Jewish. <laughs> like Yamaka <laughs> Jewish, yeah. Real, he's a Jewish like kid, right? Jewish. Okay. So you mm -hmm. you sending Braverman out there versus Tracy Howard saying, Hey, check this out. What 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 happened? Um he bombed up everybody, and I told him no, he bombed like two or three people in a row. And I said, "Don't go no more. Come here, sit down." And <laughs> I think it was Brett Getz or someone came over and gave him a band, and he was in. Brett Getz, that's the yeah, the South Florida Express founder, the guy who founded South Florida Express. Then Braverman went on. So Braverman went on to college and did what? Uh, he he led college and receiving, uh, I believe, in. 2013 or something like that. He caught for like 1,400 yards. Um, he had like six, 16 touchdowns or something like that. He ended up leaving as a junior from the MAC and getting drafted as a Jewish what, what, kid. What college? <laughs> slow down for me a little bit. What college did he go to? Western Michigan Broncos. And he went to Western Michigan and made a lot of noise, though, didn't he? I because I remember that. Mm hmm. It was he and Corey Davis. Uh huh. Mm hmm. They were the they were the, the leading tandem in college football, I believe, that year. Corey was a, a first round pick to the Tennessee Titans, and Braveman was a fifth round pick to the Chicago Bears. And he and he got yeah. so, so 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 listen to what we're saying now. So Braveman was how big? Uh five. He was an exact model of me, but white. He's five nine, one sixty-five. Five nine, one sixty-five Jewish kid, right? You taught him Yes. And he went to Western Michigan, tore it up, ended up in the NFL, right? Yes. So for the people who believe that that was a fluke, right? Who came after him? Just give me the names that came after him that that you uh, taught. Cal Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley, Christian Blake, mm -hmm. Isaiah McKenzie, Josh Ali, Jojo Natson, uh, Anthony Schwartz, Elijah Moore. Mm -hmm. um, those are, the, I think, the NFL guys that made Josh it to Isaiah camps at least. That way. Right, right. Sam Bruce, well, Sam Bruce is just a, a, a damn legend. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah. he's like just a Florida, a Florida legend. We had had a lot of, um, yes, Sam Bruce is just Sam Bruce, right? Yeah, but that's kind of when I met you. I when I met you when Sam Bruce was, was young. You guys used to be at U school. You'd be you Bootsy, which is Stanford Sam mm -hmm. Use. Stanford, Stanford um, Sam Use. Um, Stanford Sam Youth and, and who else used to be like maybe four of y'all and y'all used to have these kids on Sunday mornings at youth school? Um, sometimes Kevin and Chad would help out too. I got a uh -huh. yeah, Chad would help out a lot. Mm -hmm. Wilson. Yeah, Chad, Chad Wilson, right. Because he was actually coaching coaching at, at youth school. Mm -hmm. So he was on the chat board. So and so when did when did you just decide to like, oh listen, okay, all right, I'm finna go ahead and we gonna get this thing started and be consistent at it. Like, like, did that happen after Braverman or, or when did that happen? After at one of those tryouts, um, uh -huh. everyone wanted to know who's your trainer. So they, I mean, that was like the, I didn't even mean the market, but that was the best marketing scheme ever. Was this white kid beating everybody? That was that's what started the camp. <laughs> everyone knew that. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's what got it going. Start. That's what got it going. That no one could believe that he was doing that, that it had to be something. He had to have an advantage because once you have a skill set and you don't fit that mold, people look for flaws. So they are, they look for advantages and I was the advantage. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So that's how we got it. So going. sort of like Brave, like like Braverman, you also train an, another kid that doesn't look like your normal wide receiver, Xavier Restrepo. And last year he went for a thousand <laughs> yards in the ACC. How long did you train Restrepo? Uh, Restrepo was a defensive back, and he was a good one. He was with Coach Boosie. And he was like Boosie pride and joy, boy. He would take him everywhere and because Rochepo <laughs> always did everything right, you know. So if uh-huh. Boosie, if Boosie um uh wanted something exhibited, he would call Restrepo to do it because he, well, one of his kids, of course, he's gonna call his own kid, but Restrepo would be one of the people that he was like brave men for me. Um if you do things right, you can get it done. Look, look at Restrepo. Look how many picks he gets. Look how he understands the passing game. Look how he is a, a defensive. He was a defensive kid. He was he had a nose for the ball. It's like he knew the play. You know, like Ed Reed and Palomaro always kind of looked like they knew the play. Right. Restrepo was one of those players that looked like they knew the play. But um, in with me knowing the whole football process, I knew that's not, that's not really recruitable like that. You know, they like longer, darker kids with. Longer hair, get it? You say darker kids, <laughs> darker kids. They like reds, you know. Uh-huh. They like single digits, uh-huh. and they like right. They like school. They like schools with hyster- historical, you know, defensive backs like Northwesterns or something like that, you know. And right, basically, basically, I was saying, ain't nobody gonna offer it. You know, it's gonna be hard. He he deserves to play at a high level, and they're not gonna offer him that, at the high level at that position. So we change him to receiver. And since he's such a quick learner to study, he started playing receiver about age 13, I would say, 13, 14. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he picked it up very quick, and it was uncoverable, like, by age 15. Uncoverable. And he had – I've never seen him be covered since. Like, Restrepo's never been covered. So Brazen he's been winning these one one since he was 15 years old. Yeah, I got, I got proof, too. He's been winning against older kids for quite some time. The college kids will come home and uh-huh. – that his dad was one, one one of the people that's gonna want him to go against the best, you know. So right. he'll be matched up against a sophomore in college, and he's a tenth grader, and he will hold his own and win. Damn. So I I remember them videos, dog. I remember them videos. You remember, right? Yeah, I remember them mm-hmm. videos, and that's when I started turning to, hey, listen, man, I'm not sure what this kid is out here doing, but I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm never gonna bet against him. By the time he was 15, don't 16 years him. old, yeah, I was like, I'm not, I'm not betting against him. I don't know what he out here doing. Um, mm-hmm. but but I'm not, but I'm not betting against him. Um, so so you would say so playing wide receiver, being mm-hmm. really, really fast is just a part of it, huh? It doesn't, you don't have to be really fast, huh? No, nah, being fast gets you uh certain plays in the playbook. It gets you the go ball, right. it gets you um the play action. Anything that's play action that's going to hold the safety's feet, you get that one. Um, and it's anything that takes the roof off. So that's only about two or three shots a game that we take the roof off. So right. if you're not a home run hitter, you're only missing two or three shots a game anyway, attempt-wise. So being fast mm-hmm. is good for any time we're outside of the 40-yard line. And anytime we're trying to take the roof off the top. So once you get inside the 25, I mean, once you get inside the 40 yard line, there's only, uh, what, uh, you had 10 yards. So let's say one of 37, you got 47 yards to get the ball up and down, you know, to the back of the end zone and defensive backs aren't really scared of, you know, getting beat at when, as the field gets smaller and smaller. So that deep threat goes away anyway. So when people talking about running these fast 40, once you get on the other side of the the the, uh, the 50-yard line, that starts to go away. No one cares right. about the go route anymore. So it's really a myth when it comes to the entire football game because you're talking about two or three times we actually throw the ball where it matters who's the fastest. Hmm. I mean, I never looked so at it that with, way. <clears throat> so come, Sly, coming up, so you – um. Yes. You you were Miami you were uh, University of Miami Hurricanes uh, fan coming up like when you were when you were younger. I was on campus no? all the time. Alonzo, Alonzo Highsmith would babysit me. Tober Bain, mm-hmm. 
Uh, my cousin's Melvin Bratton, he would be in charge of me, but he, he was popular on campus. So we're leaving you, you know, with Alonzo. Right, we got no choice. Right. 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 I got you. So they were so, no, so so you pay you 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 all have you always paid attention to Miami like throughout the years, like uh especially the last couple of years, you always been paying attention to the school and what's going on? You that go fishing during football season to be honest. So <laughs> not until recently. Not until recently, because I run a football camp, so all season the off season is my in season. So that gotcha, the three months gotcha. of football is the only time I have downtime to do things with my kids and my family and be, you know, totally mm -hmm. committed. So I use that time to be dad most of the time. So, you know, mm -hmm. as of late as my kids got older and started liking football, now I can pay more attention. So yes, now I play gotcha. I pay a lot more attention to college football now. I got you. I, I wanted to ask you about a uh, about a, uh, a particular receiver. I just want to get your thoughts on because you you a lot of things that you say align with the way I think. You know what I'm saying? Like receivers don't have to be in one mold, and uh, receivers mm -hmm. can also develop. Like I'm I'm definitely a believer in developing. But like, mm -hmm. um, did you watch uh Co did you watch Kobe Young play last year for us? Number four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yes, I watched him. What did you think of him as a receiver? I thought he was a uh, a a, go, a good go ball and post guy. Hmm. All right. So all the people saying that he wasn't that fast, it doesn't make a difference. You he you you saw him running those routes, right? It doesn't matter about being fast if you can get up on the defensive back and still facing the wrong way. Hmm. Gotcha. 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 So yeah, yeah. my question is like somebody like that. How do you? Just, just, just for your craft, like somebody like that that you've seen play. How do you make him a better receiver? I speak on him because he's no longer here. I don't want you to talk about right. any of your clients that's here or anything like that. But somebody right. like him, what do you see from him and say, okay, how can I make him a better receiver? Um, I would probably have to watch more film and try and be critical. Because usually when I watch mm. watch my, I don't try to be critical, but off. Off my uh, off my head, I would probably try and get rid of his indicators. There's some indicators in the short game when it comes to routes and some um, mm. inconsistency in the stride. So those are all indicators for the defensive back, and it makes him easy. To, it makes him pretty easy to read. We can fix that though. Mm. There's things. So what you what you? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sly. Oh, the things that we look for as a as a offensive attacker. It's to not give up weaknesses. So when you watch Restrepo run a route, there's no indicator. There's no there's no weakness in the route. So um, by the time his route's done is when you'll realize that his route's done. Other people, they'll tell you that they're going to end the route. And they don't know it. No one knows it. You have to tell them that they're doing it. You have to make them aware, hold them accountable for it. But if you don't know what to look for, you'll never see it. So. It doesn't really matter how fast anyone is. I mean, that's cool because you can score after the big play, you know, after the being, uh, after you get the ball in your hand. But unless you're trying to take off the top of the defense, being fast can hurt you. You can't change directions. Right. Mm -hmm. Being fast can hurt you. That's that. I, I haven't heard that much. You know what I'm saying? I haven't heard that much when you're talking about football. Um, people always look at speed as 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 you know what I'm saying as an asset that 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 in a positive exactly. way, right? And and for so long that it was size was such a you know you know it goes it goes in these phases. So in the early 2000s, it was about being fast. You know, it was the uh, the fastest show on turf. So they had Oz Hakeem, uh, Tory Holt, Isaac Bruce. Everyone looked like me. Then right. the Andre Johnson, Calvin. Uh, Johnson. No, I'm sorry, Calvin Johnson. Yeah, um, Randy Moss era happened. Julio Jones. So that became the next recruiting profile that was hot. Then, as of late, it's changed to the Jamar Chase, uh, Justin Jefferson profile. You know, right. uh, everyone's right. six one two hundred. Yeah. So right now they went from little receivers to big receivers to middle receivers. You know, who knows what's next? Now we're going to this right. hybrid kid. This this hybrid kid that looks like McCaffrey, you know, mm -hmm. where are, yeah. where they can kind of be running backs, you know, they can their slots, their mismatches, you know, they they uh, they're good with the ball in their hand and they're not right. they're not like liability in the running game, 
you know, they can actually block. So that's right. a different guy from Torrey Hope and Najee Bruce. And it's also different from Calvin Johnson and Julio Jones. You get it? It's, it evolves every couple of years. So that's like talking about a quarterback release. No one talks about a release anymore because that's that's doing the Kurt Warner days, you know? <laughs> the Football keeps right. moving. And, and, mm -hmm, evolving? And keeps the word? Yeah, right. So how do you how do you train? Yeah. How, do you, yeah. how do you train all those types of receivers? Is it do, um, you, do I, you break break it down to the fundamentals, or is it like a certain way to train those types of receivers? Both. You break it down to the fundamentals. So what I what what our whole thing is to create a wow factor. So most people, uh, when you get them, they they don't know they have weaknesses. So we tell them that we're gonna create a wow factor, which is an acronym for work on weaknesses, W O W. <laughs> so you have to find what's wrong with them first. The only way to make you better is to find the weakest thing on you and to improve that. So I'm going to try and find your flaw and fix that. If you're good at stuff, why would I help you with that? You're already good at it. So like when I was at Bomberitos, when you get pros, they're already good at a lot of things. All you do is find the things they're not so great at and you close the gap on that. You don't try and lift up the top. You just bring up the bottom. And that's the crap. Right. That makes sense. Speaking yeah. of Bomberitos, man, you 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 helped out Najuku, right? Because Najuku was having oh, like a video. Right David. David Najuku, right? He was having a, a at Cleveland, he was having a mediocre career, then boom. He ended up in the Pro Bowl, what, two years ago? Hey, yeah. crap. He's always hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah was, right, right. So you 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 hooked up with Najuku, you kind of helped Najuku out, right? What are some of the things you know? Right um, on, uh, pushing the windows of the the defense, widening the windows and making them more receiver, more quarterback friendly. There's a thing uh -huh. that's called being quarterback friendly. You can widen the windows for the receiver, for the quarterback. You can um push the the defensive back away for the quarterback, which is a similar concept. Um, you make this, you make you like, why is this guy wide open all of a sudden? Because he made himself wide open. He knew that before the snap. So right. pre snap. Pre-snap now Dave knows that if it's this coverage, um, certain coverage, he's going to score at the opposite pylon. If it's a certain coverage, he's going to have to split the safeties on certain routes. And if it's another play, he will know what I'm talking about. He's know that he's going to score at the pylon nearest him after he gives an inside move. So it's all choreographed. There is no um, there is no guessing. All that natural ability and, and teaching things of, oh, he just has it, that's a – I mean, some people do, but the, th the guys I know that do it consistently, it's not just they did it. That's why it's so consistent. It's a it's a con it's a, a, a actual technique and strategy that's enforced by the rules of the defense. So every defense has a rule. If you're lining up inside of me, your coach is probably saying, "Don't let you inside of me." And if you're a starter, you're not you're you're a disciplined starter, I'm sure, or else the coach will pull your ass out of the game. So if I want to go outside. Still working you inside, dummy, because he has to do it because his coach says it. So I'll use all the things that his coach tells him against him. And that's the most right. consistent. So the better the player, I mean, the better defensive player, the more predictable they are. They're going to be more sound. They're going to be um, they're going to be exactly what they're supposed to be, according to their coach. So you have to know what their coach is telling you. And then you can use it against them. That's the craft. <laughs> Right. So how, right. how do you how, how do you how do you deal with <clears throat> how do you deal with the learning curve? Like uh, you sound like you're a, a pretty studious guy, right? Going out into the Mac, you know, I'm, I'm sure you felt like y'all was y'all like now looking at it, maybe not then, but now looking at it, you guys felt like you guys were ahead of the curve. Like you say, the Mac was you were throwing the ball. You had Chad Pennington out there, Marshall. We know Bowling Green go right. up and down. You, you know, and we hear yeah. all the guys that came out of Miami, Ohio. You guys had a, yeah. a, a hell of a coaching yeah. tree. How do you right. deal with, or A, how did you become so studious? Was it because you went out there? And B, how do you deal with kids that are not going to be able to necessarily pick it up as fast, like necessarily understanding, like you can show somebody how to do something and they can do it, but they may not understand why they're doing it, how to set up a cornerback. Like, how do you work with that learning curve? All right. The, the most important skill set in coaching is the people skill set. So once I know you and how you think, I'll know I'll understand how to how to how you process information. I have to process that information like you would, same as I would as a defensive player. 
to tell the offensive player what to do. I have to process the information for that person. So like I just told you, anything I do, there's certain players that can just simply copy it. And then I'll tell them why they did it. And then they'll go, oh, and some players, I'll tell them what they're going to do, and then we'll do it. And then they'll go, oh, some people, you have to do both. Some people, you have to explain backwards. You have to explain from the defensive side to them. Explain them what the defense is doing to them, what the defensive goal is, what the deep, what the what their responsibility of a, of a sound player is. So sometimes I'll say, hey, this player ain't that good. Just go, <laughs> you know, don't use all that stuff because he's not good enough to use it on so that's why we always look for the best players we always look for the most accountable players because they're going to be the most predictable and that's why you went against them all the time so it doesn't matter how fast i am how strong i am it matters about how predictable that player is on the other side of me hmm. is this how they so, talk is this how they talk to you when you was at miami, uh, miami ohio um they this is how i received the information they spoke to everyone but certain people like sean McVeigh. Uh, myself are going to receive their information and be able to distribute the other people. So right. Sean is always going to have a top receiver. Um, he's always going to be able to find a guy like a Cooper Cup or something and be able to get them to understand. And y'all wonder why they want to take quarterbacks and put them at slot. So because they kind of they'll be able to understand these concepts mm -hmm. easier is what everyone would think because it's an intellectual deal. So the craft is really between the ears. I don't really need cones and all that other stuff. I just need people to understand the concepts because. When you get in the football game, you're nothing but lines on the field. So when I see other trainers, you ask me about trainers, doing extra moves and putting things like obstacle courses on the ground, it's confusing. It looks silly. And I'm like, how is that gonna, how is that gonna help other kids? You know, or are you helping yourself? So I don't understand the concepts that they're trying to recreate with all this other stuff that is confusing to children. Are you I, I never understood that? What you so call them? Obstacle courses? Yeah, they put obstacle <laughs> courses down. <laughs> like double dare or some shit. Mm -hmm. Listen, man, yeah, we just, we, just today, we, I, we you were just out there training, man. You had maybe 30 kids out there today, right? 30. Um no. some, some, how many? How many was that, man? I 50? Uh, um in the older group, it was about 60. And then the, oh damn and the younger group about you know yeah you didn't see how yeah, to break I when I, I broke the group yeah, you, I didn't, you, can, you yeah, didn't see no. those numbers no I didn't count them yeah god damn I guess I'm the one that have to deal I, with that so I know right right so so you had about 60 about uh and, and you had about 60 70 kids out there today and some of some of your older kids came yeah. out there we had and then we went out to eat the Duffies, me, you, we went out to eat Rod Mac, Jeremiah Smith. Dog, is it did Jeremiah Smith get taller, bro? Did he grow something? He gets taller every time I see him. Oh my hey, this god! Just like, how is he still thing. getting bigger, dog? Huh? I have no idea. <laughs> now, it's been going on for years too. <laughs> He's been streaming. Yeah, like look like he got taller, man. But we all went out to Duffies and eat, man. Um, you trained most of those Ravens kids, if not all of them. Josiah Smith, mm -hmm. Chance, Jeremiah, CJ. They all came through the craft. Um, Josiah Smith has hit has hit Green Tree, man, and 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 looks light years ahead of a lot of wide receivers across college football. Tell the people who they're getting when talk about Chance. Tell us, tell us a little about Chance. Cause he looked like Chance looked like he's gotten a little taller too. Chance, Chance is more of the new age receiver. He's part of this new that the he looks like Demar Chase. Talk to us about talk to us about Chance and who's Miami getting in Chance? Who's this kid that you trained since he was nine? Chance is a is a is a guy that already understands all those <laughs> concepts that I'm that that I was referring to. Um, he he has a body that's ready to go. He has ball skills that are the high level. Chance is a plug and play in most programs. He's a plug and play He's in most programs. Mm-hmm. How does his body type? How is his body type going to help him? So he's not a slender kid that needs the muscle no, milk. Not he looks like, right, right. How is it going to help he's him slender. on the field? Uh, he, I mean, he'll be able to hold his ground immediately, so that he won't get pushed around. He can push people around probably. Um, he's more of the Andre Johnson type body, you know. He's a, yeah. he's a, a durable kid. He's going to be one that inflicts pain. He'll be hard to tackle, bro. Give him the ball, he'll be hard to tackle. 
He's strong. He's going to hold his line. He's going to push vertical. He'll be where it needs to be because he won't get rerouted. So Chance is a guy that understands all of the game and has the physical tools to match it. Most people don't have both of those things together. Well, we've got a couple that have that have it together. But those right. are rarities, and it just seems as if we got them all together at once. Okay, so and Josiah Trader, who's Miami getting in Josiah Trader? You've had him. I just put him up on Footballville when he was nine years old. You had him doing the damn. He was doing the goddamn <laughs> NFL combine. What is the drill call? <laughs> the gauntlet. The gauntlet. Yeah, at nine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So who's Miami getting in Josiah? You're getting someone who was a, a just a raw athlete. Remember, he was a he was a, a great DB. Then he played quarterback. And then he really focused and honed in on receiver at around 10th grade. So he he was – he's always played the position, as you can see. But when he really started focusing in and, and really honing on his craft was, I would say, ninth or 10th grade. And he's excelled so much since then. His understanding of the game, understanding of, uh, of coverages, of the responsibilities of other teams. And we can – once you understand it, we can start simplifying it. So no matter what the defense they put out there, it's only going to be one safety or two safeties, you know? Mm -hmm. And we can work okay. it from there. So that's what Miami's getting in Josiah. You're getting someone that understands the passing game, yes, that will be able to be in the right spot at the right time. And Restrepo is one of those kids that always understands where to be at and why you should be there. And mm -hmm. um, it's 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 an innate. It seems innate, but it's not innate. It's practice. It's, it's something that's owned. So – he owns the concept and will be able to uh they they they're always receiver they're always quarterback friendly these guys you know uh -huh. quarterback um, friendly yeah you use that yes. a lot quarterback friendly because they're, they're, my kids are always the quarterback's favorite <laughs> and i have to hear about it because why did they throw to this kid why this happens at every team you know from little league all the way up to you know it's hey. because the, the kid is the easiest to throw to he's yeah. the most consistent and when you got when you got the line, the, the everything's on the line. You're going to go with the person you trust, the person that's mm -hmm. going to be um, where you expect them to be, when you expect them to be him, be there. It doesn't really matter if it's Braverman, and he's a little, you know, he's a little Jewish, short guy. Right, I got five nine Jewish kid. Right, I said, I said, I said, right, right. And then you put right. that same okay. thing on a Josiah. Wow. Also, you Ryan Mack. Ryan Mack came through two, right? You, you get it. So when you give that same Braverman uh, intellect, so that he's always going to be in the right spot, right time, quarterback friendly, widen windows, make DBs look like they're not that fast. Braverman does that. When you give that to a, an athletic, that's why I said when I go home, I'm going to find people at the crib, and I met JoJo's and JJ's and Chances that can run fast and jump high. We didn't have that at Miami, Ohio. I said, when I go home and teach them that, it's going to be over. So Cooper over. Cup's skill set is the same as my kids, except for Cooper is a grown-up, you know? Right. So no matter what body shell you decide to put them in, no matter what avatar you use, their skill set will trump whatever situation you have. So Plies doesn't really understand that Restrepo is always going to be open, no matter what color, shade, height he is. I know you guys have favorites on colors and shades and heights because it fits your physical your physical profile and it lines up. But in the end, that 40 don't matter on third and seven, man. We're running seven yards. We're running to the sticks. That 40 don't yard. That 40, that 40 yard dash does not matter when um um it's second and second and eight on the 18 yard line. And we got right. six minutes left in this game. Do you care what that 40 time is? <laughs> do we, we do we when do we ever care where they 40 time is? Like only doing when the draft. Only when the draft. I'm here all only the time. The draft. When it's when, well, when it's time to hate on one of my kids. When they care about the 40s, when it's time to hate on one of the when they trying to hate on one of the kids, they, they bring up the 40 time. Or they'll bring up the skin color. Or they'll bring up some hype. But they never bring up the stats. My kids always dominate. And I get tired of them always, always, always trying to find flaws. They try so hard. They try to find Flaws, or he's Jewish, or he's short, or he's Spanish, right. or he's this. Jay Peasy. Jay Peasy, the court of Destroyer. Yeah, yeah, the one that no, went no. viral with Destroying, and he played, he, he, um, yeah. what league he in? He in the USFL? What, what league he in? Yeah, he was a he was a cornerback at um, at Coral Springs High School, uh, again. 
one of the kids yeah. that I, I took and made a receiver, Elijah Moore, a kid that was undersized. I took and made him a receiver. And I don't want to hear that Elijah short. I don't want to hear that JPZ short. <laughs> I don't want to hear that Braveman short. I don't want to hear that Braveman's wife. I don't want to hear that Isaiah McKenzie is short. I don't want to hear that Sam Bruce is short. What is Sam Bruce's 40 time? No one ever asked that. Only I know that. And it's 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 almost crazy how Anthony Schwartz had the fastest time, but Restrepo always gets open. Swartz, Anthony, Swartz Swartz had the, the Anthony Schwartz had the fastest time, but Restrepo is the one running wide open. I coach them all. I coach I them all. Some own the concepts and some don't. Some of, them need to, some of them need to slow down and run the right speed so they can be quarterback friendly. Isn't that a redundant right. statement? Someone needs to slow down and be quarterback friendly. Right. So, so we, something something we talked about the other night is as as dynamic as Sam Bruce looked, right? Mm. You 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 brought something to my attention that if you put Sam Bruce in a 40-yard race, he might not be the fastest guy, huh? No, we're never gonna let him run a 40. Never <laughs> never gonna let him run. No, because you got because everyone's looking to hate on the craft because they can't right. figure it out. No one figures it out. So they try to poke holes in it. They don't understand no. because, excuse me. No, go they ahead. Don't understand go ahead. So they try and poke. When they, when someone executes the craft on a consistent basis and no one can figure it out, they're going to say, "Oh, he's not fast, or he's not sh this. How is he getting open?" So I never let him know. Sam Bruce was never the fastest kid. He was the most explosive kid. And I always told Sam, I said, "They're going to try and make you small, so we're going to make you big." I say, I tell everyone my name is Sly Johnson. It's a title, not a name. So your name is Sam Bruce. It's a title, not a name. Never tell them your name is Sam. Never tell them your name is Bruce. Always tell them your name is Sam Bruce. And guess what everyone calls him? Sam Bruce. Sam, Sam Bruce. <laughs> Does anyone call you by your last name all the time? Does anyone call you guys by your last name all the time? You say your whole name like a People call me Street of my whole life. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why, but it goes Street of my whole life. But I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So to make them, that's my guy. I love him to death, man. Anyway, to make him bigger than life, we made him Sam Bruce. Not just Sam, not just Bruce. He's not special. That that doesn't make you special. <laughs> Sam, Sam Bruce. Bruce that, yeah, that's a. It rings a bell. It was a. His entire name was a. It's like Madonna. You know, all you gotta so, do is say Sam Bruce. So mm -hmm. I had an epiphany here, man. I got an idea, man. This is what I'm thinking. After Restrepo go for these 1500 yards and these 30 touchdowns this year, right? Yeah. Right. You think you can yep. convince Restrepo family not to run the 40? He gonna do some this Marvin Harrison Jr. shit. We're gonna do some Kayla Williams shit. We ain't running at the combine. Think that'll help if him? I um I think he's gonna be so productive. Yeah, your production, you just said it. <laughs> just, just skip the running. I haven't got give, me, give me what y'all think uh, about that. Fuck it. Hey, man, what you yeah, oh yeah, I'm pulling the hammy. I'm pulling the hammy right before the <laughs> right before the combine. Nah, hey. I would. <laughs> right, no. Listen, come um, on. I, if if he blazes it up this year, like, wait, you know what I'm saying? I see his mama all the time. I'm gonna put a bug in his mama ear when I see him. Listen, that boy going for thirty touchdowns. He looked faster this year. Like, <laughs> we're, uh, skipping, we're skipping the forty. We are skipping the forty. I'm gonna call that his mama, man. I got the crap for that football stuff, but I think Bomarito might have a crap for the forty. You think you know? so? I think so. Yeah, because it's so, technique. It is technique. technique. Um, so and I I've thought, been... yeah, I thought Cam Kitchens would, would, you know what I'm saying? I thought he was a guy that would figure it, get the technique down packed before it was time to run. Um, But uh, obviously he didn't, you know what I'm saying? And, and, they, yeah. and him and James, yeah, went out there and ran those four sixes. Um, but no, man, I see his mom all the time at practice, man. I'm going to pull it to the side and be like, hey, listen, man. <laughs> no, now, now listen, I don't know what was Strepo would run in the 40, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like but like Sly said, like Sly said, all it is is a chance for somebody to poke holes in his game. Yeah, that's yep. all trying to do. Right. How many, times, how many times in the game will you really get to run faster than you can as a receiver? Hmm. Maybe two two go routes. Not two go routes, that's about it. There's someone there's someone on the team that's already assigned those two go routes. We drafted somebody for that. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I never looked at it that way. You're right. Yeah. So why? Right, look. So why are you stressing? 
Uh-huh. No, yeah, I, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Never gonna get an opportunity, really. <laughs> right, right. I, I got. A, I got a question for Sly. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I got a question for Sly. I think everybody want to hear this one. Um, what's your take on? What's your take on fixing somebody's hands? And like, if we sent you like a tight end that we have, do you think you could fix his hands possibly to make him a threat, or is that something that's just not? You know. No, anybody can. No, cause I couldn't catch a, I couldn't catch a football until like age probably like 15, 16. Danny, Danny Turnbull taught me how to catch the football. I was like on JV, and Santana, yeah. that's my friend. He couldn't catch either until like <laughs> age 15, 16. <laughs> no, we had problems catching the ball. No one taught us to catch the football, coach. We learned on our own. Right. And we were hard workers, so it happened late. No one taught us the right way. But I'm so if I, football later on instead of here. But my point is that if I send you if I if I send you like a six or seventh year receiver, I mean um a six or seventh year tight end, you can fix his hands and we can get him going. You think you can do something like that? <laughs> we don't want his hands fixed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the secret of the secret of catching is just seeing your hands. That's it. Most of them, if they're doing it, trying to catch what they can't see. That's it. If they catch it where they can see, it's hard to drop. And even if you do, you get two chances at it. You get the bobble. And right. If you don't catch it where you can see, you get one chance. Yeah. So, so Ryan Mack, so, Ryan Mack come through the craft? Yes. Ryan Mack was an offensive player until um, – he still can play offense, Coach. He'll, run, he'll return a kick to the house. Uh, he was an right, offensive right, player up until right. maybe 14, 13. He, so, he played so- – so Both. I'm gonna let you tell people who University of Miami is getting in Ryan Mack, but I, I, me covering the Ravens, you know what I'm saying? Ryan Mack was used to be like a safety, right? Running um, back. He was a running older. back. Right, older. Okay, the older so, Ryan yeah. Mack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. He's back at safety, yeah. and he always seemed to be around the ball. Like he always seemed to be very quiet kid. So when the kid is quiet, like they're not, you don't really see him a lot. But he he always seemed to be around the ball when I would edit the videos. Um, Makes makes running and playing look easy, but who who was the University of Miami getting in Ryan Mack? Cause cause you Miami could use some you, some help at cornerback. They could use some help at cornerback right now. I think we're a little thin. You talking about the guy that went to the Under Armour game and nobody caught a ball, ball on him like two or three days? You know? Oh shit! <laughs> just like oh, he, that's was just big time. he was just as dominant as JoJo, but they kept showing jo- JoJo beating people, but they didn't show Ryan locking people down. I guess it's boring. Incomplete passes are boring. So, so Ryan, Incomplete. Ryan at Under Armour, Ryan did his thing at the Under Armour camp. Coach, he was just as dominant as JoJo. Coach, it's just who wants to show a bunch of incomplete passes for highlights? Yeah, no, no, that's not good TV. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not no. You know, every time he went, it was locked up, ball flying over there. Quarterback will hold the ball. I just keep it. So it's dead. There was nothing to see. So you never heard about Ryan because he didn't let nothing happen to him. Only DBs that were getting notoriety were either you got a pick or you got beat. You got bombed. After, yeah. after after a few reps, then they went through him that way. He was dominant, coach. He just don't talk a lot. He just do a lot. <laughs> no, he don't talk at all. That boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were, right. we don't talk at all. We, yeah, I think that we went to lunch today, man. I don't think he said two words, man. He he don't talk at all, but but he get out there and do his <laughs> thing. And Miami, hey, they could use some help at, at the cornerback position. You ask me. Uh, if you call him, if you call Ryan and ask him about today's conversation, he'll be he'll tell you what everyone said verbatim. Oh damn, he one of them guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> So we got a question, man. Who who who's the best wide receiver you ever coach? That's the question from the comment section. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna do that to me. Now hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, 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 hold on. So when we ask questions like that, I guess there gotta be some criteria. <laughs> who went the furthest? Who's going the furthest? Yeah, who's going um, I would say Elijah Moore's been the high. Uh, Calvin Ridley's been the highest draft pick, or, or Elijah Moore. We'll go with that. Calvin Ridley draft was pick. drafted where? First. Yeah. First round. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Elijah Moore was supposed to be first round, huh? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, he was a uh, like top pick in the second round, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> I think yeah. I think the question is more like let me, let me say it like this. The question is more, and if, and if you want to answer it, the question is more like, who had the best? What was the best set of clay ever brought to you? Like well, all the talent that's been brought to you, what's the best set of clay you ever had, Mo? I'll say the most consistent people that's ever been in my camp. My camp's been going on from 2006. The most consistent people were Braverman, then Restrepo, and JJ. So I would say those three have the the most understanding because they would have the most reps they have the most reps at the camp it was braverman restrepo and jeremiah smith would have the most reps because they just never missed you know so mm -hmm. when it came to like demonstrating i say um who's going to do could someone demonstrate a concept i will pick one of those you guys would like um the, the the most highly sought out after would be the one with the best profile, which is going to be Jeremiah Smith at the best profile. He's six foot four. He runs really yeah. fast and he has the same skill set as Restrepo. Right. So now you get that two or three deep ball that we were missing earlier. Now you get those. Uh -huh. So I guess I guess we'll go with him because he has those extra two or three balls. You see how you right. answer that question? And, Street, boy, they talk that man well at Miami. Very diplomatic. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. They that man well. <laughs> and you remember, you remember all the way all back, the JJ. Let me. You, you got kids. You were JJ, your right? Y'all parents. Yeah. Yeah. Who y'all favorite kid? I am. Who y'all favorite? No, I ain't got no kids, so I ain't, I ain't got no kids, okay. so I can make an answer. Can't say. I ain't got no kids. So. <laughs> you don't have one. <laughs> mm -mm. You don't you don't have one. No, I, I, I get you. No, no, I get you. We want we want to ask you who your favorite though. But now nah, we get you, bro. We get it. <laughs> yeah, the one that fits yeah. the most. They all have the same exact skill set, you know. So the one that fits mm -hmm. the physical profile is going to be the one that that is the most highly touted. But cool. JPZ has a good skill set. It's just that he's short, so he has to go do destroy. But um, mm -hmm. JoJo is tall, runs fast, and jumps high. So he's going to get, he's going to be a first round pick. But it's the same skill set. So give, give me some funny stories, man. Jeremiah Smith used to be a little skinny, scrawny kid, bro. Right? Give me some funny <laughs> stories. Did he always play wide receiver? Didn't he like try to play cornerback uh, or somebody wanted him to play cornerback? He was a running back at Scott Lake. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I don't know if they were using him right over there because that ain't work out too well. We ended up at the Ravens <laughs> over with, with Rod. But he was originally a Scott Lake Viking, like all of us. We all from Scott Lake. See, his dad is my regular friend. So JJ would be in the car seat. And me and Chris are living our regular life. And as he got older, um, you know, uh, he used to go to a camp uh, with, with my homie, Fahim. And I was like, Fahim I saw Fahim. him on, on, yeah, I saw him on Facebook one day, you know? And I was like, um, oh, you, you, you're, you're JJ playing receiver now? He was like, yeah. Um, I got him in the camp, this and that and that. I was like, yeah, bring him over here. Find him son in my camp. <laughs> he was in Fahim camp. Fahim son was in my camp. So yeah. Over here, man. <laughs> Why was Ali in your camp and Fahim was running his own camp? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ali is not. Ali, Ali the Atlanta Falcons, right? Yeah, Josh is at Atlanta Falcons, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Bro, I, yeah, mean, I guess he had one day because I because I think uh -huh. he lived in Broward at the time, and his and I was at my camp was in Broward and Davie. But I don't know. But that's how I found out because I saw he was he was at another camp, and I was like, "Hey, man, bring him over here if you go if y'all running camps." Mm -hmm. So when Fahim camp stopped running, he was with me and Josh because Josh was with me since about like six or seven, and uh, right. JJ came at about age eight. But there's an age gap, so you get it. No, I got no, no. I get it. I, I got you. Yeah, so JJ, they were all together. Huh? So JJ, right, right. Elijah Moore, were all at the same spot at one time. Sam Bruce. So they were all at the same spot at one time because the ages is are close enough that one was nine and one was sixteen. So if you would have come at one time, you would have saw. Uh, you may have caught Calvin, really not Calvin, because he's a little younger. You might have caught Christian Blake with Isaiah McKenzie, with Restrepo, with Ali with uh -huh. Schwartz, 
with more. They might have all been there, but they'd be different ages. Like today, we had ages from what? Seven to like 17, 18? So 10 years from now, that, that list yeah. will look crazy from today. And there'll be a big age gap. And you'll be like, there's no way he was there with him. Yes. Yes, Restrepo's been with JoJo forever. Or Elijah was with Restrepo forever. Or, you know, Christian Blake was with Josh Ali. They were all there at the same time. So it's a real small football community. Right. And we tried to get the camp at, at Scott Lake for years. And then um, Miami Gardens took over the park. So I ended up in Broward County at Davey Optimus. That's where I found the Elijahs, the, the Buckshot. Remember the Buckshot? Uh, Steve Calvert, quarterback from Kara yeah, City. Yeah, Buckshot. Kara City quarterback, yeah. And um, he, I got so Austin Stock. Remember, remember the the quarterback, the white kid at um, Central. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Wait, what is all those name? guys were together. Uh, yeah. All those guys were together with me, and then that's how those white quarterbacks start going to Dade County because they were familiar with all the kids from the camp. And then the camp moved to University School with Roger Harriet, Matt gotcha. Kevin Beard. So Sly, listen. For, for, Before we before we let you before we let you out of here, I got a question, man. I hear you just gave a list of the kids that were the most consistent. You know what I'm saying, coming to you, um, and and it seemed like 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 your your kids have success at college. But you say Jeremiah Smith was one of the most consistent kids, right? Yeah, yeah, ever. He walks ever. into Ohio State, and in front of him we have in front of him we have Egbuka. We got Ballard and we got Cornell Tate. Those guys are there already. They're the starters. Mm -hmm. If you had to take a guess, do you think Jeremiah can walk right in there and take snaps from those guys? Yeah. If it if it's allowed, though. If, if it's allowed. <laughs> if it's allowed. You know, um, they got the the court, the receiver thing going on over there. So, if uh, right. a high school kid from Florida that that didn't come up under that heartline too, that comes and jump all the heartline kids, I don't know if that's going to be too kosher. Yeah, got you. Because heartline, has, right, right, has right, like but, but, right, right. He's got kinda, guys that, like, that uh, yeah. But, but we will say. I, I get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But listen, man, you got, you, listen, man, go ahead, man. Um, go ahead, and finish your night, bro. Listen, we we don't have you on here more often, man. I love how you break things down and 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 make people understand the game from a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So definitely, we're gonna have you on here more, dog. Uh, any other questions before you get out of here, Richie? I got any questions for him? Um, I do, but it'll make it just make the show go too long. I, I had I had a blast listening to the slide. I think everybody did. So. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you rock. Bro. I'm gonna let you get on about it. No, I'm, I'm just gonna give you your flowers, man. You're a great teacher. I mean, you're a great teacher for, for real. Thank so. you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thanks for noticing, man. I've been doing it forever, and you know, I wasn't. A, I'm not. A, you know, I'm past the social media. I I didn't know the social media thing was a big deal, and I'm older. And I do things like go fishing. So, you know, I guess no one knew what I was doing all the time. So I appreciate you guys with your platform because, you know, like I told you, I ain't, I wasn't as savvy as other people were. So they marketing, they were marketing things that I was doing, you know? Yeah. And that's my fault. That's my fault. But here's the crazy part. He got all the video, though. He, st but he I got, got the all the video. He got all the pictures. <laughs> he just I got the ready. testimonials. I had to talk to him. I had, I put him to the side. I was like, Sly, listen, bro. Like, listen, either you want to be the spook that sat by the door or you want to be the guy. <laughs> like, Puff Daddy in front of the camera. If you want the guy in front of if you want your CEO in front of the camera, what what, what um what he said about that's, Puffy? That's, 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 that's the wrong name, but we get, we get it. We get it. Yeah, right. That's the wrong name, but we get it. But so and 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 you got it and you got what I was saying. Listen, bro, a lot of this is about marketing. You know what I'm saying? We know what you got works. You feel me? Right. Yeah. But a lot of it is about marketing, man, and, and that's where we at with it now, man. And and boom, man, it's working out for you, right? 
Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I, that was a, a tip from you, man. I really appreciate that. You ain't gonna be able to go to Publix any, any soon. You ain't gonna be able to just walk around and go to Publix. <laughs> People gonna be stopping you talking about coach, man. Hey, coach. Coach, my son. <laughs> coach, my son. <laughs> <It's live. laughs> we don't have much space. Street. We don't have much space out there, huh? No. 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 Uh. 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 No. We, we, but we that's, we, we but that's what it's about to turn into. Yeah, we need to work on that, man. We go. Get we gonna work on that. Yeah. We talked about that talk, already. Man. Yeah, we just talked about that, man. We just talked about that. I'm gonna holler at you, okay? Yeah, yeah. I need some help. Then we're gonna have more kids. I need some. <laughs> I need some people to understand this crap. I've been trying to teach other people for a while. It's just, it's it's a it's a it's hard to to get them to have the concept and then have uh -huh. them be able to, to deliver. That's the hardest part is getting other people to understand it. See, y'all grown ups, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So when I when I break down stats and say, how many D balls are you really throwing a year? It's 30 games. I mean, um, it's 16 games. You take two or three deep shots a game. We caring that much for real about that. And who's going to you going to throw to the same person anyway? Randy Moss is the deep ball guy. Who cares what Wes Walker 40 time is? Right. So right. once I get once I get the, the concepts to be owned by other people, I can get that right there. I can get that receiver to believe in himself now, because if right. you're telling him he's slow and I tell him, Man, when are they gonna throw a bomb? Tyreek Hill, how many bombs did Tyreek Hill's catch this year? And him being so fast, all he did was have it on the throne. He had to slow down all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so listen, before you get out of here, I see this question that we had. We were just at we, we were just at the park this week, me, you, Josiah, and Ray Ray, right? Ray Ray, yep. um, Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel Joseph. What's your take mm -hmm. on Nathaniel Joseph? Oh man, he's he's probably the most improved player there is. Yeah. He, yeah. He and he done put on 16 pounds, right? We asked him at the mm -hmm. park the other day, like, damn, Ray Ray, how you what he said? He started eating. Yeah, man. He's 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 getting it. Yeah. He's getting it. Yeah. I I really think that uh he'll probably be the one that shocks everyone. Cause uh everyone else uh is uh you know has these uh expectations already. And I know that Restrepo is there and um he's he's the guy so if anyone's able to to, to make a few plays here and there that uh that no one else expected i think it'll be ray ray i know we, we expecting it we ready for it <laughs> it's coming we waiting on it but all right yeah. man, go, oh, yeah. go get it's your coming. spaghetti or something man you were talking all right it's coming from all of them but that's probably the one that the fans will be most, I mean, least expect. That was it. All right, man. I appreciate everybody appreciate having you, me man. on. No, appreciate, appreciate. I appreciate you, bro. All right. Oh. Thank you, man. One day better, everybody. Sir. That was good. Yeah, man. That was, that was great. That was great. What 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 do what y'all think? What the villains think? Hey, like, like I can see them talking amongst themselves. I can see them talking amongst themselves. They like they was into it. Mm -hmm. And we need we need two more likes to get to a hundred likes. By the way, a hundred? How many people in here? It's over two hundred people in here. Ain't it? What we got in here? Oh, one seventy four. Man, y'all get the likes up, please, please. Oh, y'all gonna go. see slide a lot more. There we, go. we we got it now. Okay, y'all gonna see slide a lot more. I can't, um, yeah, y'all gonna see slide a whole lot more, man. Um, that was that was good. I could ask them questions for days, but you know, people gotta go to school in the morning. So, <laughs> what you think, Street? I I froze over here. Y'all can hear me. I think I froze over here. My system look acting crazy over here. I don't know what doesn't happen. Yeah. You froze on my screen, but I can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, y'all can hear me? Oh, yeah. I don't know what the heck going on over here. I've been attacked. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to just go ahead and tag him now. He gets put away, man. But, yeah, gems, man. We told y'all. Um, Do you want to drop that plug now, Kyle? Um... Listen, we uh we're gonna be running we're gonna we're gonna be running the Discord live uh during spring. 
maybe Friday, maybe Saturday, whatever the day is gonna be, right? Um, we're gonna try to bring Sly in there, but you know, we get a little, we get a little raw in there, so we might not wanna, you know, overexpose my boy. But we're gonna be running the Discord live. We're gonna do how many weeks of spring we got left, Mitty? I think three. We only got we only got three, three. weeks. Mm-hmm. Three. Yeah, okay. We got time. So we're gonna. Yeah, so we're gonna run it. We're gonna run a Discord live, man. So everybody can come in and y'all can um get a behind the curtain look at what goes on in the group me, what the villains talk about. Um, we're gonna try to get we're gonna try to get information out to y'all as, as best as we can. We can't let y'all know everything, but if you want to know everything, that's how you join the group me. Um, well, that's why you should join the group me so y'all can have more of these discords. But we're gonna bring them to you guys live. Um, during spring. Um, we want you guys to be there. Probably what we say, street Friday nights, maybe some Saturday nights. We're gonna bring y'all one every week. So we want you guys to get in there and um, you know, we can get some like all these questions and stuff y'all asking. Y'all will be able to come in there and then y'all can ask them for yourselves and y'all get live responses. So Right. Yeah, man. And and someone like Sly, man, he's a he's a he's a resource, you know what I'm saying? He, he's someone who is knowledgeable in their craft and we love giving it to you know our YouTube subscribers. We appreciate y'all. If you don't, you know, if you haven't said it already, but we got to make some of that stuff exclusive. There was some stuff from Intel about you know what's going on at a particular university. <laughs> but we can't give you all that here. You know what I'm saying? But we got to, you know what I'm saying? Type shit. We got to throw that in the back. You know what I'm saying? So as long as we get it, man, become a villain. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Tux, man, chill out, man. We trying, we trying to, trying to build a community. We trying to make it cool so everybody can talk, man. So a couple <laughs> people in there be a little nervous talking. But hey, sometimes when we get into some some topics, and, and a lot of times, Kyle, tell me if I'm lying, it don't be Kings football. It be something completely unrelated, and they'll be going <laughs> in there for yeah. hours. Like, like so, <laughs> right. hey, stay on long enough. We got, we got, we got, we we definitely got a night shift. You stay on long enough, <laughs> we'll get this. <laughs> we're getting some of everything, but. If y'all want to get some of that nitty gritty, some of that good stuff, some stuff we not, you know, necessarily gonna talk about here in the open, like Medi say, um, he said it well. We love our YouTube subscribers and everything, but it's you know, everything ain't made for YouTube. For those things that are not, y'all need to sign up. You know what I mean? Uh Medi, tell them where they can sign up at. I'm about to pull up right now. Hold up. Mm -hmm. so y'all can come so in there and mm -hmm. come in there and argue with Brandon Tooks. Argue about he argue with heat about forty times and all that good stuff, man. Shout out to um, hey, shout out to that boy Don Snaps. Y'all seen when Streeter uh put up the tweet? Y'all saw Don in the um, <laughs> y'all saw Don in the tweet reply to plies. What do you say? What do you say? Um, I'm not Reply forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's on there. You see the comments on that when you pull it when you pull it back up on the screen, you'll see Don in there. Shout out to the villain. <laughs> Down there, Street, make sure get implies ass. Street, make sure I trip. It's the link, right? Is that again? Yeah, that's IOD right squad. Here? That's the right link or no? That's that's IOD. That's IOD squad. That's that's how you get IOD okay. squad. Huh? I'll put, uh, put the link in there for uh. I'll put the link in there for. Give me right. Give me I right. I got you. Yeah, that's IOD yeah, squad. Anytime you, IOD. See, anytime you see lunch pass, that's IOD squad. That's if you want to buy some Bitcoin. Point. Goddamn Bitcoin seventy thousand. Y'all still sitting on y'all hands. What going on? <laughs> it ain't real, Street. It's not real. It ain't real. It ain't real money, huh? The credit card ain't either. About that no more. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we man. Y'all boys money. come on over. Y'all, y'all boys come on over, man. We're gonna try to get some. Hey, Street, boy. Hey, speaking of IOD, remember we talked? I, I was, I was probably about a month too early, man. You see what Tesla doing? That 150 coming, boy. Look, that's why y'all should join IOD squad because you can make money with the market going up or down. Trust me, I don't make plenty. This shit going back, yeah, like my money wanna, going forward. If you want to get in the uh, puts yeah, and all that, betting on stocks to, to, to yeah. fall off a cliff, yeah, you can. We they teach that. If you want to be a long term investor like me and hold, you know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I Ten thousand dollar return, man. I'm not flexing. I'm just being honest. No, man, he flexing. Listen, Maddie just made four hundred percent on the video, right? Bro, three hundred percent. Every time the video go, no, bro, no, listen, I look at listen. every. Oh uh, no, my baby being 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 shy. You turn what two thousand dollars into eleven thousand? Like ten k. Should be more than that. 
Just hold it. It's more than just, that. Listen, just hold in the video. He ain't do. He bought the shit, and he sat there for how long? I bought it in what about two April years? Twenty twenty. I bought it April twenty twenty, so I've hold, I've oh, held it for four 20s. years. Damn, he bought it April bought of twenty twenty and just sat there. Yeah, I bought three shares of it. I bought three shares. I sat on it because I figured everybody was gonna be at home. They were gonna use their computer, so I said, "Why not?" You know what I'm saying? But a lot of that stuff got sparked from me just talking about it and being in the IOD squad. So you can't you can't click it, right? So me, right. I'm so not, man, I you didn't, click you didn't save that. You didn't save that two bands to put go it. to the strip club and. No, absolutely in. not, Rich. <laughs> there was no strip club. It's Everybody clickable. cough in your face and you might die. So I so I I, I had I was like, what? I ain't got nothing better better to do with it. So I put I bought I bought three shares in the video, like eight hundred bucks. I sat on it. Eventually, I want to say maybe two years, a year later, two years later, it split. So my three shares turned to twelve, and then it took off like a rocket ship. Bro, hey, you support your 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 OnlyFans, uh, your best OnlyFans, uh, chick that you knew. Nah, you ain't help out. <laughs> nope, we we don't do that. She in you, studio. Shout out to Studio Live because this is one this is one of these these meme coins that I believe in. I be, I don't say it much because I know it's a lot of far. Link, street? It, no, it's clickable. It's clickable, bro. It's clickable inside. Well, hold up, the lunch pass one is clickable. But oh, it doesn't. Okay. No, wait up, wait up. Okay. That, no, that's, not, not, I, that's on me. That's on me. I no, I'll put another version in there. I'm gonna put another version in there. Um, but I don't talk about Shiba in you often, you know what I'm saying? Because I know it's kind of it's kind of a little far-fetched path, but it's a crypto, and it's one of those communities that I think, man, that they, they, they're gonna it ain't even worth a penny. Remember, Deuce Coin wasn't worth a penny, and everybody was like, Hey, when we get that penny, I'm gonna be rich. She being used like work point zero 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 zero, but it has a strong ecosystem and it has a strong following. So that's that's one of those cryptos, bro. Um, meme coins that you that 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 I think will will push in this in this crypto run. But the main bet is is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is is where it starts mm -hmm. at. Then Ethereum, then Cardona, and all of these things. But yeah, mm -hmm. Medi, I'm, I'm gonna put the link in there right now. There. Yeah, Maddie did that just by sitting, just by sitting there and not 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 going crazy when it pulls back and you lose thirty percent of your money, forty percent of your money. Not, you know, Oh my God, I knew this stock shit ain't work. Ran out the door throwing chairs at the No, bro, he was patient. He was patient, and I'll show him straight. Hold on, it went Maybe up. You don't do this, but I'll show him. Look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right now is good. Phone. All right, right now is a good time to um. Right now is a, a, right, time, a good time to get in because we're looking at a. This is April seventeenth, twenty twenty. I bought three shares, two hundred eighty nine dollars, eight hundred sixty seven dollars for those three shares. Right. On June tenth or July twentieth, twenty twenty one, I didn't do anything. It just split four for one. So my three shares is now is now twelve shares. <laughs> right. Right. I still didn't do anything with it because I was like, oh, cool. I got more shares than I, that I didn't have to buy. All right, whatever. Now, if you go back and look, don't ask me for no money because I ain't got it. <laughs> We're going to put that out right now. It's still going to take three days. It'll take three days I'm to also get not it a anyway. financial advisor. <laughs> but look, same 12 shares. I ain't buy any more. Market value is 10 grand. Total return nine thousand eight hundred sixty-five dollars. Just went up another cent. Mm -hmm. I don't got it. Look, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not on your leisure. Don't call me. I don't know. I'm just saying. Sometimes you have to take patience. The market moves based off of who's impatient. If you're impatient, it's like we're talking about with yeah. crypto, which is a whole other investment opportunity. You gonna find yourself in a position where you're gonna be like, God damn, I should have waited. I should have. I should have. I should. Ain't, ain't y'all tired of saying that? I should have got in Apple. I should have got in Google. I should have got in Facebook. You got to be tired of saying it, but you got to be able. You got to be able to see it. You know what I'm saying? And and now the information is here. Now you got people that look like you saying, "Hey man, I got money in in Shiba in you. I got money in Cardano. I got money in Bitcoin. You got people that look like you saying it. You know what I'm saying? Now it's not just a dude on the TV with a suit on 
that you don't trust. You know what I'm saying? You got people, people that look like you saying it. And still. I'm going to point this out, Street. You see what he's doing? This What Studio One's doing is all I did. I just sat back and thought about futures, right? Like, what is going to happen in the future? We know AI is taking over. We understand mm-hmm. that. We know things like 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 robotics and things like that. We know it's coming. And if he's, if he has his vision, if you have a vision like this, once again, I'm not a financial advisor. Nobody told me to buy that stock. Mm-hmm. I just bought it off a whim. Like, I think this is what's going to happen. So I bought it. I bought plenty of stock. I bought stocks in Virgin, Virgin Galactic Space Explorations. Man, I ain't made shit off that. I've lost money on that stock. <laughs> but it's something I figured. So I'm just like, but I'm still going to hold it because eventually we go out to leaders' planet. We don't take care of it. But that's another conversation for another day, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just take, hey, what do you what do you want to take a shot on, right? And if you don't, then find something that that, that is, I don't want to say trendy, but do something that's gonna you know put you in a position that you can at least make a little bit of profit. And if you want to pull out because you're impatient, pull out. Cool, do your thing, right? Right. Pause. But if if <laughs> if if you are in it for the long haul, you have to learn how to take them lumps. It hurt watching me lose a, bu- a bunch of money, and there's a possibility it could happen again, depending on how this put this you know election swing, right? So, I I gotta brace myself for it, right? But it's a thing. It's a thing. Like, see, when people say lose money, like you gotta understand, it's it's like I saw somebody the other day say, before we get out of here, we are gonna get ready to wrap this up. Street, why you don't tell people how much money you lost, right? Like you don't, you don't tell people about the losses. You only tell them about the wins. It's kind of like saying. Why you don't tell people what happened on second down or third third down? Why you just talk about the first down? It's it's almost like it's almost like you win, you win, you lose, you lose, you lose, you win, you win. You just win bigger than you lose. So the losses don't matter because at the end of the day, you're in the red, right, Maddie? That's it. Mm-hmm. Are you in the green or are you in the red? <laughs> the losses don't matter mm-hmm. because. Yeah, the losses just have to be minimum, and the wins just have to be larger. Like Medi, four hundred. You're not gonna lose four hundred percent. He made four hundred percent, three hundred percent, whatever it was. Right. So that's why you don't really talk about the losses. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to lose. It's almost like playing football. You're going to lose yards. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a play in this game where you lose yards. Mario's Mario's gonna have a first <laughs> down, and the line is gonna push. <laughs> Yeah, right. Henry Parrish gonna get it's gonna be second and twelve. That's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, right? Yeah, you, you got Cam Ward, so yeah. second and twelve don't look as bad this year. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Right. You, you, might a, you might have a TVD. You might have a Tyler Van Dyke. Ain't throwing that bitch go all the way to the house. Like God damn, I just lost all my money. <laughs> that that is a very real possibility. I'm telling you, but you might have TVD at Boston College. Right, never, so, yeah, get, so, never, yeah. never hate on getting profit. You always it's, you take a profit. It's a, you right. it's a series of wins and losses. Wins and losses. Your losses have to be minimized. Your wins just have to be bigger. Are you in the green or are you in the red? That's why people don't talk about the losses. You know what I'm saying? But let's already get up out of here, bro. Are you five and y- seven? Y'all enjoyed seven that, man. Y'all enjoyed Sly. We did, oh, yeah, man. Shout yeah, out to yeah, Sly. Man. We- we got to bring Sly to the okay. Discord, man. Shout yeah, we got to get Sly to the Discord. Yeah, we, put, we, him we, behind, we, put him behind the curtain so we can really talk, talk. Yeah, we, yes, need, sir. A <laughs> we, we need We need to get a Sly and Plies combo. That's what we need to do. Sly and oh, Plies, sly, man. Oh, nah, we might. I don't know. He said Sly and Plies, man. You cats might be cussing sly, uh, Plies out. I don't know about that one. And that's hey, kind of odd that, that's, that Plies would actually say something about Restrepo. Like, like. You rarely specifically hear him talk about people. He just talk about scenarios. He he just oh, didn't know. He, he, I mean that that was probably the fan the fan of in him coming out. You feel me? Uh huh. And I and I get it. I mean, yeah, fans get like yeah, that. Yeah. So no hurricane fans. Billions of hurricane fans have said that what he said. Yeah. <laughs> you know right, what I'm saying? Right, but but right, now, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now it's just like, all right. The motherfucker's good. I don't give a fuck what he look like. Sly just explained it to you with Braverman. Like, he just explained it to you. Like, listen, it is a craft. I'll teach it to your daughter if you let me. You know what I'm saying? It's a craft. <laughs> it's a craft. It's a it's an art that they've created that works. Right. 
Well, let's get out of here, man. Y'all make sure you hit the like button, share. Uh, if you're not subscribed, man, hit the subscription. It's free. I know y'all get scared. Y'all think it's gonna Apple Pay charge you some money, but YouTube subscriptions are free. <laughs> y'all be surprised how many people don't know that. If you didn't know that in the comment section, raise your hand. They see subscription and they think Apple Pay gonna go bling. You just subscribe for seventy five dollars. <laughs> no, nah, man, it's free, man. It's free. A lot of people don't know that, dog. Y'all think? Yeah, I'm telling you, bro. I've been doing this for a long time, man. You can't assume nothing. Mm -hmm. Nathan, <laughs> but let's get out of here, man. Um, get this jump in this group, me man, with these villains, man. I appreciate y'all, boys. Y'all got anything y'all want to leave the people with? Hey, it's in, the Cam Ward just got a in Ancor NIL deal. I'm assuming that that was part of him coming here, you know what I'm saying? This NIL deal he got with a Fortune 500 company, they didn't say who the company was. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming, but I'm also assuming going forward in football, bro, those are the type of things you're going to see. Miami mm -hmm. is just very out front when it comes to NIL and their ideas. Um, but I think those are the things you're going to start seeing more and more in the future. All right, man, let's get up out of here. Go ahead. Take us out of here. Um, Mitty, shut us down. Right. Appreciate y'all, man. Later.